Well, hello, very good morning to you all. Hope you're all well. Uh, God's being good to you. Uh, time's fairly moving on, isn't it? Uh, we're still having a, a nice time here anyway. Won't belong to lads over too, but anyway, let's just pray and ask God's blessing on us, shall we? Father, we do thank you for another day. It's another day of opportunities that you grant us, Lord, to share your love, your grace, and your mercy. We're living in very difficult times, Lord, very peculiar times, but we know that you're in complete and utter control. We do pray again for the sick, Lord, this morning, Pauline and Helen and Joe and Violet and Herbie and Robin, who all need a miracle touch, Lord. We pray for Jean Kennedy as well, Lord, who needs that touch upon her life. Lord, minister to each and every one. We raise them up to you, Lord. We come to you through the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, not through your own name or the name of a movement but the name of your lovely son and we ask that you would move and breathe life into each and every one restore health and strength in jesus name amen amen well i want to read verse 2 this morning which is really probably my favorite verse second corinthians 5 and 21 it says for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god my goodness gracious me. It's an incredible verse, and it's a, it's a verse that's caused great theological debate. There are a lot of people who say, and wrongly say, that he was literally sin in the abstract, or sin as such. And uh, we can't pretend to this because it's not theological and it's not true. Uh, when Jesus was on the cross he did not become sin he was not sinful we're missing the whole validation we're missing the whole point to what has taken place here there are others say well if he took your sin and took my sin which he did then he was a sinner but again that flies in the face of scripture jesus was not a sinner even though he took your sin and even though he took my sin he was not a sinner. He was not in any sense of the word guilty because he was innocent. Even Pilate said, uh, after some examination, I find no fault in this man. Incredible. He, he was not in any sense of the word guilty. Uh, he was not a transgressor of the law. He didn't come to abolish it. He said that he came to fulfill it. Uh, so he, he, he didn't deserve to die. Guilty people deserve to die. But he didn't deserve to die. So what actually was Jesus when he uh, became sin for you and me? The bottom line is that uh, he was a sin offering. He was made sin. He was a sin offering. He wasn't a sinner. He wasn't guilty. But he became a sin offering like the lamb in the Old Testament, which was a prophetical, ut prophetical utterance of what was to come. Jesus Christ offered himself up. The spotless lamb of God offered himself up on that cross for you and for me. You know, I was thinking that Sometimes people get a wee bit down, or as I said yesterday, we're despondent. We think that no one loves us. We think that no one cares about us. We think that no one's stepping up. But think about this. Jesus Christ became a sin offering for you. That ought to excite our souls today. That ought to lift us up from that place of despondency that we could not possibly pay the price for our sin. We could not fulfill the law. We could not live up to the mark of the law. And Jesus comes and he steps in and he becomes your sin offering. He becomes my sin offering on that cross. And he dies for you and he dies for me. And what does Second Corinthians 5 and 21 tell us? The ultimate aim is, and this is absolutely mind-blowing for me, that we might become 
the righteousness of God in him. For the first time ever, for the first time ever, the Old Testament patriarchs could not taste of this. The Old Testament patriarchs could not partake of this. Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, none of them, not even David, could partake of this. But we today, who are under grace, are righteous, righteous, right standing before God because of Christ. So never think little of yourself. Never look down on yourself. Never believe that God has no plan and God has no purpose for you because he sent his son to die for you. He became your sacrifice, my sacrifice, that we might be right standing for God. We don't say that boastfully today. We're not saying it boastfully today. Well, look at us. We are right standing before God. We, we are great people. No, no, the fact is that we are sinners who deserve to go to hell, but Jesus came down and he stepped in. Why did he do that? Because he loved you. Because he loved you more than you will ever possibly understand. And my prayer today is that you experience that freshness, as it were, of what Jesus actually did for you. That, that you would experience that freshness through the power of the Holy Spirit, a fresh glimpse of Calvary and the meaning of Calvary, that it should have been me and it should have been you on that cross. But Jesus said, oh no, Brian, oh no, Joe, oh no, Mark, oh no, Elizabeth, I'm taking your place. You couldn't have paid the price because of your sin, but I'm taking the place. I'm the spotless Lamb of God. And when he died and rose again, at that very moment, we had access to God. The temple, the, 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 the curtain in the temple ripped from top to bottom, and we had full access to God. How did we get that full access to God? Because we are righteous. You remember how the priest had the rope tied to his feet? If he hadn't, confessed all of a sudden he died in the holy place and they had to drag him out well that doesn't happen to us it's absolutely incredible it's absolutely remarkable that we can go right into the presence of god simply because we're righteous when god looks at you and god looks at me he sees the price that his son has paid and we are no longer in bondage we're no longer in fear he who the son sets free is free indeed may you be encouraged today Look at yourself and think about this a moment. For a moment, you are actually right standing before God. There is no spot. There is no blemish. All because of what Jesus did on that cross for you and for me. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of of God. Hallelujah. What a great truth. Be blessed today by the truth of God's word and hope to see you all soon. God bless. Have a wonderful day.